years ago, we could not have said that we can see the end of HIV tuberculosis malaria. But today, we can actually see how we completely control these three infections. That's remarkable. No one in history has ever had that, that ability to say that, or the opportunity to do it, more importantly than to say it. It's also got a flip side to it. If we don't do it now, we will lose the opportunity. You know, remarkable historic opportunities don't have huge opportunity timelines attached to them. Uh, there's an opportunity cost to not acting. Each of the three diseases we know if we don't act now, if we don't invest more now, we'll come back. We are in a downward trend in all three of these diseases. But we know from Uganda that HIV, the gains are very tenuous. Tuberculosis is the same, and in fact, sadly, we're already seeing in Eastern Europe, uh, in parts of Africa, uh, increasing in the increased tuberculosis rates, because we're not paying enough attention to it, because we're not investing enough. We're seeing increases in multi-drug resistance and malaria, the data are overwhelming from around Sub-Saharan Africa. If we pull off just a little bit, if we take our foot off the gas just a little bit, malaria will resurge and will resurge rapidly. When we look, because of the significant investments that have been made, because of the significant progress that has been made, we've really pushed HIV and tuberculosis, anyway, into corners. It's been pushed away from the general populations into pockets, into small geographic areas and small risk groups. And who are those people? They're young women and adolescent girls. They're men who have sex with men. They're sex workers. They're people who use drugs and inject drugs. And they're prisoners. The marginalized, the vulnerable. So how long will it take to end, and, and what do we lose? There's no, I can't give you a specific date. I can tell you what models are showing. But I don't believe the models, because I think they're underestimating the opportunity. Um, so. In the same way that 12 years ago, everyone said it was impossible to give antiretroviral therapy in Africa, and we now have 10 million people in low and middle income countries with treatment. Um, I, the current models are showing it could take 15 to 25 years to completely control HIV, TB, and malaria. I think that's nonsense, and they're not actually taking into account, and nonsense is too strong a word, that we're not taking into account what starts to happen when you have these massive interventions that can really bend curves down rapidly. But if we continue to do what we're doing, we are actually seeing malaria being forced into pockets. And there are new approaches that are being designed to then eliminate the parasitemia, or at least reduce the parasitemia and the, the, the risks of transmitting the infection. So it's, it's called herd immunity, basically, that what we're trying to do with all of these things is get to such low levels that the risk of transmission is very, very low. If we don't completely control these three infections, including MDRTB, we will have to pay to continue to treat people, whether it's for MDRTB or for drug-resistant HIV, or in the tens and tens of millions more than we have to do today, because there'll be so many more people infected. Whereas if we control the virus and we suppress it now, so many new, few, fewer new people will be infected that the costs go way down. And we will get there in the next five to 10 years. Uh, but we'll only get there if we control the epidemics. So it all ties together. You all tie together. We're all tied together. We can do this. We will do this. Thank you for what you've done.